Hey everybody, this is Death by D4 and welcome to my guide on how to play as the Monk class in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. There's a lot to go over, so be sure to subscribe and let's dive right on in. At first level you get a DA for your hit die, proficiencies in simple weapons, short swords, any one artisan tool or musical instrument of your choice, strength saving throws, dexterity saving throws, and two skills of your choice from acrobatics, athletics, history, insight, religion, and stealth. You also get Unarmored Defense, which allows you to add your Wisdom modifier to your Unarmored AC. Unfortunately, this does not actually stack with a shield. You also get Martial Arts, which grants you a few benefits while you're either unarmed or wielding monk weapons and have no armor or shields equipped. With it, you can use your Dexterity instead of your Strength modifier when making attacks with your unarmed strikes or monk weapons, gain a die to any damage that you deal with your unarmed strikes, and allows you to use your bonus action to make an additional unarmed strike after making any attack with your unarmed strikes or monk weapons. So, what does all of this mean? Well, you're pretty squishy. Honestly, the only thing saving you from not having any armor proficiencies is your unarmored defense. But even that isn't all that remarkable. Barbarians can gain AC and hit points at the same time, since their unarmored defense scales with their constitution score. With your scaling with your dexterity and wisdom, you're definitely going to be lagging behind in that regard. Likewise, your weapon proficiencies are also not very good, though I will make an exception for the quarterstaff, as that actually has quite a lot of potential for you. Seriously, being able to use a quarterstaff with your dexterity modifier despite it not being a finesse weapon is really good. However, once your unarmed strikes become more powerful, you'll probably just stop using any weapon entirely. Finally, your skills are... Yeah, you know where I'm going with this. Honestly, the monk just kind of sucks at first level. Sure, there's lots of potential for it to get better, but that doesn't stop it from being weak in comparison to the other classes. I mean, unless you're comparing it to the ranger, because there's nothing worse than a ranger at first level. Anyway, at second level, you get Key, which gives you an expendable resource pool equal to your monk's level. You also gain a few uses for your Key, allowing you to use your bonus action to spend one Key to do a variety of different things. Oh, and you also get all your Key points back after a short rest. With Flurry of Blows, you can make two unarmed strikes instead of the usual one after making an attack. With Patient Defense, you can then take the Dodge action. And with Step of the Wind, you can take the Disengage or Dash action while also doubling the maximum jump distance you're capable of. Honestly, all of these options are pretty good for you, especially Flurry of Blows, as that will allow you to attack up to three times in a single turn at only second level. Coupling that with the fact that you get all your key points back after a short rest, and you've got yourself a pretty good feature that's really going to become quite useful for you at higher levels. Oh yeah, you also get unarmored movement at second level, which increases your walking speed by 10 feet while you're not in armor or wielding a shield. This bonus also increases as you level up, capping out an additional 30 feet of movement, which is quite nice. Oh yeah, and you can also use this feature to run up along walls and across liquids once you reach 9th level. Honestly, I personally quite like this feature. It really does open up a lot of maneuverability for your character, especially at higher levels. All in all, a pretty nice thing to have if you ask me. At 3rd level, you pick your monk subclass. So far, you can pick from the tradition of the Drunken Master, the Four Elements, the Kensai, the Long Death, the Open Hand, the Shadow, and the Sun Soul, all of which offer you new features at 3rd, 6th, 11th, and 17th level. Honestly, just pick whatever speaks to your character the most. I won't go over all the features of these subclasses right now, but if you'd like me to in a future video, please let me know down in the comments below. Oh, you also get Deflect Missile at 3rd level, which allows you to use your reaction to reduce the damage that you receive from a single ranged weapon attack. The reduction is determined by 1d10 plus your dexterity modifier plus your monk's level, and if you happen to reduce the damage all the way down to zero, you can actually catch the projectile and then use a key point to throw it back as an attack as a part of the same reaction. Wow, talk about stylish! Not only is the return attack quite useful, but the damage reduction that you get is also quite nice as well. All in all, this is a really fun feature to have. At 4th level, just like everybody else, you get your ability score increase, which you get again at 8th, 12th, 16th, and 19th levels. On the topic of stats, I'd be sure to max out your dexterity score first, followed up by your constitution and wisdom score second. Otherwise, just ignore your strength, intelligence, and charisma scores, as they're going to be doing basically nothing for you. Oh yeah, you also get Slow Fall at 4th level, which allows you to use your reaction to reduce any falling damage that you receive by an amount equal to 5 times your monk level. Honestly, this is a nice feature to have, but you're probably not going to be using it all too often. At the very least, it pairs well with your unarmored movement, especially at 9th level, but it's otherwise a pretty meh feature if you ask me. At 5th level, you get Extra Attack, which allows you to attack twice on your turn. Simple, yet highly effective. You also get Stunning Strike at 5th level, which allows you to spend one key point as a part of a melee attack action to force a creature to succeed on a constitution saving throw or be stunned until the end of your next turn. Wait, what? Okay, I guess the monk is just bad until 5th level then, because, uh, wow, is this ability just stupid. Basically, this feature just allows you to use your key points to just stunlock a creature to death, or, heck, 
stun multiple creatures in a single turn. This feature is absolutely disgusting, and you should totally abuse it once you get to this level. Anyway, at 6th level you get Key Empowered Strikes, which makes all of your unarmed strikes magical for the purposes of overcoming damage resistances to non-magical attacks. At this point you might as well just start using your fists entirely for combat now, as they're arguably going to be better than most any weapon that you're actually going to have at this point. You know, unless you found yourself a really decent magic item, then you're probably just going to keep using that instead. At 7th level you get Evasion, which allows you to reduce the incoming damage received by a dexterity saving throw whose save requires you to succeed for half damage. Now when you fail these saving throws, you only take half damage and, when you succeed them, you take no damage at all. Wow, considering how dangerous and common a lot of dexterity saving throws tend to be, this is actually a really nice feature for you to have. Plus there's no limit on how many times you can actually use this, which means that you'll always have it available to you whenever you'll need it. All in all, this is a fantastic feature and one that you're definitely going to be happy you have for later on. Oh yeah, you also get Stillness of Mind at 7th level, which allows you to use your action to end any one effect on you that is either charming or frightening you. Honestly, as useful as this feature can be, it's also pretty bad, especially since it requires your action in order to do this. Honestly, it's still a useful feature, but just not one of your best ones, that's for sure. At 10th level, you get Purity of Body, which makes you immune to all diseases and poison damage. Considering how dangerous some diseases can be, as well as how common poison damage is in general, this is actually a pretty remarkable feature for you to get, and the chances are pretty high that you're actually going to gain some kind of benefit from it sometime. Either way, this is definitely not a bad feature for you to have. At 13th level you get Tongue of the Sun and Moon, which allows you to understand and speak any spoken language. Not gonna lie, it's a bit random to say the least, but I'll admit that it's still pretty useful for you to have this. That said, that's all you get at 13th level, so it's a bit of a terrible shame. Overall, a fun feature to have, but certainly nothing crazy. At 14th level, you get Diamond Soul, which gives you proficiency in all saving throws. Yes, you heard me right. All of them. Plus, you gain the ability to spend one key point to reroll any failed saving throw once. So basically, at this point, you're just expected to never fail on a saving throw. Wow, that's just kind of insane if you ask me. I mean, at this point, you're definitely going to start feeling a lot more useful during combat. At 15th level, you get Timeless Body, which means that you cannot be magically aged and you no longer need food or water in order to survive. Well, isn't that just fantastic? I mean, it's not like you really need weapons or armor at this point, but now you don't even need food or water. So, I guess the big question is, what could you possibly spend your money on? You know, aside from buying the odd piece of equipment now and again. I mean, seriously, kind of like Diamond Soul, this is another ridiculous feature, but unlike the former, it's more of a sillier one than anything all that useful. Still nice to have though, I'll admit that much. At 18th level you get Empty Body, which allows you to use your action to spend 4 key points to become invisible for 1 minute. Kind of nuts, right? Well, what if I told you that, while you're invisible, you also gain resistances to all damage types except for Force? Sounds almost too good to be true, right? Well, it's true, and believe it or not, there's still more! You also gain the ability to spend 8 key points to cast Astral Projection on yourself. Yes, a 9th level spell which allows you to basically transcend your spirit to another realm of existence. I just... Why? The invisibility of this feature is already good enough, especially since it can't be broken like traditional spellcasting. But the damage resistance and the astral projection on top of this too? This is just insane. I mean, just... Wow, okay, monks really are just the kids that you picked on back in elementary school. You know, the ones that just happen to grow up to be your employer, and become capable of turning invisible while elbow dropping your face through a desk? Yeah, those ones. Either way, just... Wow. This is just an insane feature for you to have, and you should definitely take full advantage of it once you get there. Finally, at 20th level you get Perfect Self, which allows you to regain 4 key points whenever you begin combat without any. Though not an amazing feature, it does actually give you just enough key points to be able to use Empty Body again, and that alone is pretty awesome. If not that, you get a few multiple uses of Flurry of Blows and Stunning Strike. Either way, this basically means that you'll always have plenty of options available to you whenever you start combat, which is always good. Alright, so that does it for all the class features, now into just a few of my own personal recommendations concerning it. If you'd like to play as a monk and you have no idea where to start with a race, I'd recommend the Shadar Kai Elf. It gets you bonuses to your Dexterity and Constitution, Dark Vision, Proficiency and Perception, Advantage on saving throws against being charmed, immunity magic that puts you to sleep, the ability to gain the benefit of a long rest in 4 hours instead of the usual 8, resistance to necrotic damage, and the ability to use your bonus action to teleport up to 30 feet once per long rest. When you use this feature at 3rd level or higher, you also gain resistance to all damage types until the start of your next turn. Wow, though the Shadar Kai is a powerful race in general, it really does lend itself extremely well to being a monk, so there's just no way I couldn't recommend it. 
At the very least, its defensive options will make it a lot easier for you to survive during the earlier levels, which is always good. Now, as for feats, I could see both Tavern Brawler and Grappler being pretty fun in this regard, as one will allow you to attack and grapple at the same time, while the other will allow you to pummel your grapple targets with advantage. Aside from that, maybe Sentinel just if you want to lock down people around you, and if that playstyle doesn't really interest you, maybe Mobile, as that will give you a lot more mobility as well as a free escape option from any creature that you've attacked on your turn. And that's it. That's everything you need to know in order to play as a monk. Personally, I believe that the monk class is best played as a frontline attacker whose role is simply to deal damage during combat. However, that's just my opinion. So what are your thoughts on the matter? Are you excited to give the monk a try? And if you have already, what was your experience with it like? Let me know down in the comments below. If you'd like to support the channel, be sure to give this video a like and consider supporting me over on Patreon. Patreon supporters gain access to my patron-only server over on Discord, where you can join in on my games and chat with me and other patrons about anything D&D related. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon if you haven't, and if you're interested in seeing more videos of mine, here's one right up over here. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see all of you in the next video.